So Eric here, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to retire faster. I'm going to share the two tips to retire faster and how you can escape the rat race and achieve something called escape velocity. So that's very interesting and let's get started. So before we start, I just want to celebrate the 66 case study in Investing Accelerator where Mike made 112% from FedEx in seven weeks. Congratulations, Mike, for doing a fantastic job. So right now we're running a 100 likes giveaway for a specific book. And in this video, we're going to be giving away the Warren Buffett way. So if you're interested in getting this book for free, then like this video, leave a comment below. And once we reach 100 likes, I'll select a winner from the comment section. If you haven't clicked subscribe already, I know 98.2% of you are not subscribed yet. It is free and you can always change your mind in the future. So please help me by clicking subscribe and notification bell. So what is escape velocity? Space, the final frontier. Yeah, okay, we get it. So escape velocity is really about escaping the Earth's gravitational pull. So then a rocket can go from the ground level to space. Now, why is Eric talking about escape velocity? Like, does that even matter? And let's look at the definition of escape velocity. Escape velocity is the minimum speed needed for a free, non-propelled object to escape from the gravitational influence of a massive body that is to achieve an infinite distance from it. Escape velocity is a function of mass of the body and distance to the center of the mass of the body. Wikipedia. So that is a little bit complicated, I think, but essentially what this quote or definition is trying to achieve is that what is the minimum speed you need to go to escape Earth? And basically, it has two variables, the mass and distance to the center of Earth. And that's what you're trying to do, except you want to do this for retirement. Now, when it comes to the escape velocity for Earth, there's actually a very specific number, and that is 11,186 meters per second. Sorry, I was using the wrong image for Earth. So that's the right one. So when you look at this specific number, it makes you wonder, is there a specific number you need to achieve in order to escape the rat race, in order for you to escape the nine to five job? And in this video, I'm gonna help you calculate that number. For myself, I want to achieve escape velocity with money and wealth. I want to be making so much money that I don't need to work again. Basically, my money is able to earn enough money so then it just, you know, like a snowball and it rolls and it rolls and it rolls and I just kind of live off a portion of that money. And that's what I mean by achieving escape velocity with money and wealth. And there's actually a very specific term for it. It's called financial independence and retire early. There's actually an entire Reddit group or Reddit subreddit that is dedicated uh, to this concept. So if you haven't joined that subreddit, you can feel free to check it out. There are a lot of interesting content on there about how people can achieve financial independence and retire early, which is fire. And the focus there is mainly on saving, you know, reducing your expenses so that you can save money and then you can invest in index fund or whatnot, okay? Now, let's talk about the escape velocity for wealth. Now, what is the formula for escape velocity for wealth? And it is actually a function of mass times distance. But in this case, it's actually the size of your portfolio or the size of your account times the return you get. This is the formula for escape velocity. And if you figure out the math here, then you can pretty much get out of working a nine to five job eventually. So the next question is really, what is the rat race? And if you haven't watched this video, it's called A Pursuit of Happiness, The Rat Race in a short film animation by Steve Cutts. So it's actually quite interesting and I really suggest you to watch it. It's a short three to five minute video and it has quite an interesting and intriguing animation about society today and how this artist think about happiness and the rat race as well, okay? So let's go back to the formula for escape velocity of wealth. It is basically your account balance times the return you get annually, which needs to be your greater than your expense per year. So you'll see that this is actually your return divided by year, uh, sorry, per year, and also your expense per year, okay? So let me fix that. All right, so when you think about it, if your money is just sitting in a bank and it's making 1%, then it's gonna be quite difficult for you to retire. But if you have a higher return and a large balance, then it's easy 
for you to retire. So right now, I'm going to dive into a scenario analysis where I'm going to use one of the Excel tools I developed to walk you through a couple of scenarios. So this is really a tool I use with my clients when I'm having a free strategy session with them. So if you're interested in walking through this tool with me and have a phone call, then you can actually schedule a phone call below and we'll have a chat about investing, understand your investing strategy to see if I can help you. But basically the tool works like this. Now there's a lot of numbers here, so I'm just going to direct your attention on the numbers that matter. So first here, on the three columns here is one scenario. So C, D, E, F. So ignore the columns on the right uh, right now. And on average, people make around 8% a year, okay? So that is the return you get for investing in index fund. That's the return you get for investing in S&P 500. And the monthly savings per person, it's usually around 1,500. Now, if you are a high income earner, like you're an engineer, doctor, like accountants, then you can possibly save more. You probably save more if you have wife as well. So, but this number, I'm just putting a number here, but if I change it, it actually changes the entire Excel. Maybe I'll put this in the link below. Mm, I'll think about it. And right now, what it, this is calculating is if you have $30,000 and you save $2,000 a month and you earn 8% a year, this is how much money you will have every single year for the next 35 years. Okay, so that's actually what this calculates. So if you're interested in the formula, it goes like this. It just, it's a recursive, it focuses on the return and it just times it and it grows, so on and so forth. So every year with $2,000 worth of savings, you save $24,000 here. So that's just this number times 12. So fairly straightforward. And your return on getting 8% is $2,400. So not a lot, but it's still positive. And then you will see that next year you get $4,512 and year three is $6,793. And you'll see that this number goes up over time because obviously your portfolio balance goes up over time. And when I'm talking about escape velocity, I'm really talking about this number greater than your expenses. And if your expenses is let's say 40K a year, then once you hit this figure, year 13 of earning 8%, and savings of 2000 then you will be able to cover your expenses and you can retire. Now, of course, 40K seems a little bit low and I didn't build in any buffer. So you probably want to be a little bit safer and aim for something like 60K of expenses. So then that means your portfolio needs to be somewhere between 600K, which is 597K here, to 830K in order for you to retire. So this is the escape velocity you're looking at, is 8% a year with this portfolio balance. Now, what if you go like, wow, that's actually taking quite a bit of time to save this much money, which is almost half a million to three quarters of a million dollars. So if you want to retire faster, then you need to make a higher return, which requires a more complicated strategy and requires you to have more knowledge when it comes to investing. If you make instead of 8%, 10%, then you can take a look and see, oh, hey, I can actually achieve escape velocity in year 11. And if I want a little bit more buffer room, then it's year 14. So this actually pushes up your retirement time by approximately two years or so by earning 2% more. So that is fantastic. So this is usually the scenario analysis I go through. Now for most people, your annual expenses is really looking at around 80 to 100,000 or so. So you're really looking at this year 15 to year 17 range. So whenever you start saving money and you start compounding, you start putting money into your bank accounts, then from that day onward, if you count 15 years to 17 years, then you can retire with a million dollar portfolio. And this is really why so many people are fixate on becoming a millionaire, a millionaire, a millionaire, is because if you hit a million and you earn 10% a year, that is sufficient to cover your family's expenses. So when I say your family, I'm really talking about you're married and you have one kid. And I did some rough calculation, and this is kind of like the annual expense I think people need where if you are a solo unmarried man, then it takes around 25K. If you are married, but no kids, then I think it's 50K, so it's around 25K per person. If you have kids, one kid in this case, then it's 75K. So this allows me and you to do different scenario analysis depending on where you are today. Okay, so I think so far I haven't lost anybody and let's talk about the interesting part. And the interesting part is what if you make an even higher return? And this is actually doing scenario analysis 
for myself. And when I first started, I started with very little money. I started with like 10K and I was saving around 1,000 a month, maybe less than that. I probably less than that, but I was able to make 30% a year, or at least my target is 30% a year. Now, if you're looking at my actual return for the last five years, around 48% a year, which is quite high, but really on average, I expect 30% a year. I'm pretty happy with that. And if I want to achieve escape velocity, you'll realize that, well, initially I'll be saving 12,000 a year. And this actually doubles my portfolio from just saving money and loan. And you can see this ratio I calculated here is how much money that I save relative to my portfolio account. And you'll see that this number actually goes down over time because as your portfolio grows and grows, the saving factor actually doesn't impact your portfolio growth as much. So saving is really important in the first five to seven years. But once you reach a certain portfolio size, and in this case, uh, 367,000, then saving an additional 12,000 doesn't really move the needle. It's only a 3% of the 367,000. And at this point, the return you get is much more important in terms of growing a portfolio. Now, if I have such a small portfolio and I save 1,000 and I make 30%, then you'll find out in year six with a 200K portfolio, I can already retire and cover my expenses of 40K, right? If I want a little bit more buffer room, then I'll have a, almost a 300K portfolio, 273 here in year seven, and I would have 60K year over year gain. And at this point, you can already see that my saving of 12,000 doesn't really contribute much anymore. You can see that it's only 4% of my portfolio. Uh, even if I save 12,000, it's not really moving the needle for me. And if I go down here, you'll realize that this percentage actually becomes a zero afterwards. So it's not really useful to save that much money after you have achieved what I called critical mass. So this is really the escape velocity I'm talking about. So if I'm a guy living by myself, and I just need 25K a year, like I'm living in a low cost of living place, then I can probably achieve escape velocity around here. The reason why I calculated it to be in nine years is because I want to make so much money that it covers multiple years of expenses. Because obviously the stock market is unpredictable. A lot of things can happen. Like I might get 30% this year, but then I might get 25% next year. So I wanna make enough money that covers my expenses by three to four times. In year nine, I'll make 110K, but my expenses as a solo person is only 25K. But if I have a family, then this will delay my escape velocity year to around 12 years and 13 years with kids. So here you will see that I'm still earning four to six times of my annual expenses, which is around 200 to 300K a year. And then my portfolio is around a million. So I'm earning multiple times of my annual expenses. So I know I'm safe and I know there's sufficient buffer room. Now it's still taking me 12 years or so or whatnot to get to this level. But then the income I'm earning here is much higher than if I do 8% here, which is actually gonna take me year 18 to reach a million dollars and only getting 73K. But if I'm earning 30%, then with 1 million, then I'm getting approximately 250,000 or so. So that is really the difference. That is really the importance of getting a high return because it can save you literally years of working so then you can retire faster. And on the left side, this is what most people have, you know, dividend investors, index fund investors. This is a very safe path. It requires no financial knowledge. You're not trying to beat the market. You're not trying to get a higher return. You're not trying to learn anything new that will allow you to beat the market. For most people, if you're starting with 30,000, save 2,000, 8%, then it will take you around eight years and you will just be comfortable living where you are today. Now, what's interesting is that I actually haven't factored inflation in this calculation. So it's actually quite important because if you factor an 8% minus 3% of inflation, then you're really earning 5% return. And inflation is super important because 20 years from now, a lot of things are gonna be expensive. So if you wanna retire with a 5% return, then you're really looking at somewhere along the lines of $2 million. So that means you need to work 30 years in order for you to retire. And this means, this means you gotta work a lot because you want some buffer and you wanna sustain your family. So you need 1.7 million. You work 30 years. If you start working at 20, that means you need to work at least till 50 to retire. If you are starting to save when you are 40 years old, then you need to work 30 years 
which is 70 years old before you can retire. So this is really the difference between a return. Even if it goes from 8% to 5%, it makes a huge difference. Um, I covered this in a lot more depth within Investing Accelerator, but I'm just showing you the possibilities here. So right now, um, I'm around 30 years old. I'm actually not there yet. I will be next year, but I'm closer to a more ridiculous number of savings is around 200K, okay? More or less is actually more, um, but, and I save around 3K per month. Probably more than that, I'm just putting a conservative number. So these two are my conservative figures that I'm using to do an estimate from 30 years old. Now, if I'm a 30 year old person saving 3K a month, I have 200K in my portfolio and I make 30% a year, I actually make more than this, I actually make 48, uh, but we're gonna use a more conservative number in this case. Then in order for me to achieve my escape velocity, I probably get to 1 million here, then I can make around 250K a year, 238K, then that's already four times of my income if I'm married. And if I'm gonna have a kid, then I need one additional year, so six years uh, to get to this 1.4 million figure. And then my year over year gain is gonna be 320,000. And at this point, you can see that my savings of 3K a month is not that significant anymore. So it's really going down and I achieve escape velocity with kids at this level. And I think this is actually an important point that a lot of people miss is that when they are calculating this, they somehow just do the calculation for themselves and they didn't include the kids. For myself, I want to have kids. I know I'm gonna have kids. So I'm not gonna live frugally until I achieve escape velocity. Uh, so I'm just gonna live normally, try to save 3K a month. And then once I achieve 1.4 million or so, then I'm going to retire per se. Now, this means if I work a regular job, nine to five, and I continue on this path, then I can retire by around 36 years old, okay? So it magically works out to be quite an early retirement. And I'm quite sure if you know there's 300K of gains a year, even if I just take a discount on this and I make 25%, which is 300K or 280K, that should still be more than enough to sustain a family, provides my children with a good education and go to their soccer games, live in a comfortable place um, that has, you know, two, three rooms or whatnot. So yeah, so that is really the difference. And I don't need to go through the remaining 15 years of grinding uh, because even if I grind with a full-time job and, and I continue to save 3,000 a month, once I hit the critical mass, in this case, it's 1.4 million, then the savings actually doesn't help that much anymore. You can see it went from 12% all the way down to 2%, 1%. And then after 12 years from today, it doesn't even matter anymore. It's like 0% onwards. So that is really the plan I'm executing. And remember, if you look at where I am today, it seems like really far away. You just gotta remember, I started learning investing when I was 18 and I started investing and trying out different things for eight years. And I didn't really find a successful strategy until five years ago. So after five years of hard work, this is my portfolio balance is actually a lot higher than that, but I'm just using an estimate. But if you're starting somewhere with like 100K, 30K, that is totally fine. You can just start with where you are today. And what you really have control over is how much you save, which determines how frugal you are. And to be honest, I'm not that frugal. Frugal. In my opinion, I could be a lot more frugal. Like I know a lot of other YouTubers, um, they are a lot more frugal. For example, like Graham Stephens. I wouldn't consider myself to be very frugal, but I focus on getting a high return and I work my nine to five job. Uh, so then I also have a high income as well. So that is really my strategy. And I think we have gone through quite a number of scenarios here. I think we're all on the same path of growing our portfolio. So then we retire faster, spend more time with our family, so on and so forth. And regardless of how much buffer you want and slash what is the lifestyle you want, I think you need to at least hit a million to $2 million. Now, of course, if you hit a million dollars with 8% after you minus inflation, you actually not living that lavishly. Uh, you're just maintaining a good average lifestyle within North America. If you are getting 30% and you, you hit one to two million, then I think you are definitely in one of the high income earners range and you can live a more luxurious lifestyle perhaps, or you can travel a little bit more and you'll be making three to five times your income uh, in terms of your annual expenses. Uh, so you will be a lot less stressful, I would say. Okay, so that is really the scenario analysis. And like I mentioned earlier, my vision for myself is 30% a year. My goal is to make 30% a year. Right now I'm making more than 30% a year, which is fantastic. And I just wanna share this vision with you because when I first started, I have no strategy. I have no idea what I was doing. I was actually losing thousands of dollars. And until five years ago, 
I figured it out and I developed a strategy that made me 558% in five years. So that's not bad. It's fairly good. And I focus on helping people without a financial background to master investing and target 30% a year. So that is really my transformation. And you can see the before and after. I used to spend 40 hours a week on investing, losing money. And now I only spend around one to two hours a week on investing and it's fairly passive. And I just want to congratulate Mike for making 112% from FedEx in seven weeks. So that is a great achievement and I look forward to your next successful investment. If you want to learn more, then you can click on the first link below, which is how to get 30% from the stock market in the next 12 months. It is a free webinar that you can watch and it will help you quite a bit when it comes to technical analysis. It will help you quite a bit when it comes to finding the right time to enter in the market. It will help you quite a bit when it comes to understanding fundamental analysis and why that is important. So if you have any of those questions, then I would suggest you to register for the free webinar and watch it. And then near the end of the webinar, you can schedule a call with me so then we can chat. And perhaps we'll go through this tool together to figure out what is a reasonable time frame for you to retire early. Yeah, so you can schedule a call with me and we'll go through this tool together. And in terms of the 100 likes giveaway, we are giving away the Warren Buffett way. Uh, if you haven't read any Warren Buffett books, you definitely need to read at least one. I think you need to read at least one, whether that is Snowball, Warren Buffett way, or any even Chinese books about Warren Buffett. I think those are fine. But what's important is that you need to understand where he's coming from. And for the next video, we're gonna talk about retirement faster again, and this time, is one of my favorite topics. Pay 0% capital gain tax on stocks of 100K portfolio in Canada. And I'm gonna share three tips, easy, medium, and hard. Now, if you're living in Canada or US, you can probably implement the first two, which is the easy and the medium one. But if you are living in Canada and US, you probably have a little bit trouble implementing the third one uh, because it actually requires a lifestyle change. So I'll talk more about it in the next video. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please help support me by like, subscribe, and you can watch the next recommended video here as well. So I'll see you in the next one.